Good morning, folks. We're on the precipice of change, a paramount period in science, and you've got some homework to do. More on that in a bit. First, a knock down a peg. You'll remember in February we predicted major storms for March and April at the coastline that could ramp the earthquakes and decrease the drought. Well, we've all seen the phenomenal seismic uptick on the western faults as the storms came through, but it didn't put a dent in the dry conditions. Fair article here on the arid extremes experienced out west. Let's look a little more short term. Last night's storm zone produced big time. Apparently, as the measurement mission flew by, someone was playing jump around in the cabin and everyone was listening. Turbulence. But today, the storm has moved further east offshore. The main concerns, minor only, are at the coastlines near the U.S.-Canada border. Meanwhile, we're also having a lighter day over in Europe. Still have one convergence that drops isolated severity, but for the most part, this is nothing locals can't handle. Top watches bring us down under. We already have one cell over New Zealand and a convergence line over Australia. But additionally, we have the strongest storm on Earth right now barreling right at the Northeast Peninsula. Up north, the other, the weaker system, is heading for the Philippines. Top quake watch zone is from here north around to the Aleutians. Sunspots present no real danger other than the potential to ramp the polar protons when they head for the limb. Chances of an eruption are moderate. We have no large umbras, but we are seeing a bit of magnetic mixing where blue and red cores come together. You can see that on the departing spots, there is at least one area of interest in each, the entirety of the middle active region having complexity. Meanwhile, deuce is wild and a triple threat on the northeastern limb incoming. Solar flaring has been low to match those departing sunspots. Solar wind is calming after a brief speed ramp yesterday. Likely another weak interplanetary shock and our shields got his chest puffed out this morning having owned those CMEs. Of course, the real space weather concern for days has been those incoming coronal holes. Yikes. Mars is in perfect geocentric opposition to the sun, so let's check out that coronal hole power. We're at ISWA, NASA's integrated space weather application. You can pull signets for any aspect of the Earth-Sun environment, but to check that coronal hole power, we stay on the default solar tab. It's either panel 13 or 14. This thing's always changing, so it's a little tough. But you look for Earth magnetic connectivity. You can see the flux line shown on there, the solar wind speed at the bottom. The speed will be our stand-in for the power emanating from those coronal holes, unrestricted with the umbral and coronal fields wide open. We have major power. We've had no big earthquakes yet, but Oklahoma continues to be above average, and this is the largest quake to hit France in years, not terribly far from their largest ever back in 1909. Let's hope that counts as our quake uptick, fingers crossed. But back to a time of change. First, if you haven't seen Dr. Kong Pop Wu Yen's presentation on his YouTube channel, it is fantastic, in line with our discussions at the channel, and you will not be disappointed you watched. Then, on the Thunderbolts YouTube channel, we have Dr. Pierre-Marie Robitaille on Kirchhoff's Law. When he aimed for eight Tesla magnets in an MRI machine, they said it couldn't be done. He doubled the nuclear magnetic resonance world record and has since saved an unmeasurable amount of lives because of it. I've met him twice, and he's as warm and polite as he is brilliant, and he will show you why physics is about to change forever. This man's name will be remembered, so I suggest you start now. Nowhere near as intelligent, but arguably funnier and with decidedly more hair. Who's that dude? Folks, the Thunderbolts have also posted my speech from the conference. You'll find it right next to Pierre's speech on their YouTube channel. Until I have about a week or two for updates, please use the Thunderbolts channel to watch the speech. You should be over there watching Pierre anyway. I'll likely hop on Google Plus a little later today to discuss all of these things, the speeches, and the end of the Mobile Observatory Project Kickstarter campaign. Folks, this is the last day to support our project, last day to get your name on the RV. Let's make it count. Shots of our star real quick, and then you've got some homework to do. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.